Today, let's pray with a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus came home. Again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The Gospel of the Lord. What a way to finish the week, by listening to the Word of God. People, Jesus' own relatives in fact, end up saying that he's out of his mind. We'd say he's crazy. They don't really understand who Jesus is. Almost without realizing, this week the topics of appearances and of looking into the heart popped up. We saw how the Gospels draw on the Old Testament, how Jesus healed, how he cast out demons, how the Pharisees objected, how they watched Jesus closely, how they judged him and his disciples. Crowds were following Jesus everywhere. They thronged around him and followed him. However, Jesus wanted to purify their outlook on him. So today, on this Saturday, my proposal is that we can do a review of the week, but bearing Jesus' gaze in mind. Remember that God doesn't look at things like humans do. He looks at the heart. We look at the outward appearance. The Pharisees looked at appearance, and so did many of the people who followed Jesus, even his relatives. They didn't really know who Jesus was. Jesus looked at the heart, and that's why nobody understood what he was doing. That's why at one point, Jesus is angry and indignant at the Pharisees, whose hearts cannot be softened. So it might be helpful to wonder how we are looking at things. What are we looking at? What do we look at in others? What do we see when we look at Jesus? What do we seek? Are we worried about how people see us? Are our security and strength founded in how other people see us? Maybe they also think we're out of our minds. Sometimes it happens that when we set out on the journey of faith, other people, even our relatives, give us sidelong glances as if we were out of our minds, crazy, as if we were religious fanatics. They don't understand us. If we are too interested in God, it's because we're religious bigots. Now, it's okay to be a football fanatic, a huge fan of a singer, isn't it? However, when we're into the things of God, we inevitably become fans of Him, and people tell us, don't exaggerate. Some time ago, a woman who just found faith, who could only marvel at a God who makes us fall in love with Him, told me that her son didn't understand her. He didn't understand why she attended Mass on a regular basis and thought she had become a fanatic. It isn't pure wickedness. It's understandable. He who hasn't opened the eyes of his heart to Jesus finds it hard to understand the great delight taken by those who have discovered that there's nothing more important and transcendental in life than loving Christ with all our heart, mind, and soul. Another mom told me she had to cope with her daughter's constant rejection because she couldn't understand how her mom sought Jesus. Those who aren't on the path of life with capital letters are respectfully indifferent to us in the sense that deep down they believe we're crazy. They feel annoyed at the joy we take in following someone we can only see through the eyes of love, through faith. Maybe it's happened to you. No worries. It happened to Jesus himself. His own relatives thought he was crazy. So if something of the sort happens to you, I'd say it's a good sign. It's crazy to be madly in love with Jesus, as a friend of mine says. So, what shall we do? Do we feel sorrowful? Do we fix our eyes on Jesus? Do we get angry at people when they see we're out of our minds? Because if we put our heart too much into what others see in us, deep down, we aren't putting our security in Jesus. So in the game of gazes, of how Jesus looks at things and people, of how we and how other people do it, 
We can do a spiritual examination that will help us accept everything we have to accept. The first thing is to start getting to know Jesus, who doesn't like being recognized by what he does, but wants to show us his heart. Well, on the one hand, what do we seek in Jesus? What do we see in him? What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for what we want, or are we seeking him for the sake of his word? Are we listening to him? Are we open to what comes? On the other hand, do we let ourselves be looked at by Jesus? Do we let him show us the truth in our hearts so as not to judge ourselves as we sometimes do? Do we let him tenderly look at us as he does? Or are we paying attention to some other thing? And to conclude, let's pose ourselves these questions. What do we look at in others? How do we look at them? Do we judge them? Are we too quick to pass judgment? Or do we wrench ourselves with people's presence? Also, are we too worried about what other people think of us? Well, I hope that on this Saturday, we can make a statement on what matters the most, on what's essential in our lives, which is how Jesus looks at us. No matter what we did, what we didn't do, or what we are, he's the only one who truly knows who we are and what we are called to be. May we have a good day, and may the blessing of our merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, descend upon our hearts and remain with us forever. Thank you.